But it is time for our Q and A. So <laughs> that What's was up? lovely. Um, yeah, I, I, there are two people who are going to be going around the audience with mics. Yeah, the lights are a little bright, so I may be squinting. Yeah, um, what, what we'd like to do is start with script students. The first few questions, we'd love to come from script students. Um, I ask, please, that it is a question, oh, not a comment. <laughs> All right. Come on, y'all. Get them in here. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Right Let's here get in it. front. Right here in front. Hi, I'm Chugo. Um, What's up? <laughs> uh, my question is, you talk a lot about working until you die. And mm. <laughs> that's like basically one of the tenets of capitalism. And mm. I'm not saying that you're a capitalist, but like, where do you draw the line in that? Like, when do you have to stop, you know? That's my question. Mm. Oh. Mm. You know, it's interesting because I feel like I was put on this earth um, to do something. Um, and, and you know what's interesting? Someone asked Oprah, what is your greatest fear? And she said, it is not reaching my fullest potential. And I think for me. Ooh, I'm scared. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> I think for me, I want to get out every story, every, every character, every moment of truth, every piece of honesty that's in my soul out before I go. So, and it's interesting because there's another like really, really random like reference, but this goes back to me like seeing everything. So you know the movie Troy? <laughs> Brad Pitt, right? <laughs> Whitest movie ever. So. Whatever, it's all good. So, at the very beginning of the movie, and I don't know why this stuck with me, like, and I saw this movie by myself in a movie theater in Chicago, because that's who I was, but there's a little boy that goes to get Achilles, played by Brad Pitt, to go fight somebody in the town, because the king wants him to do it. And this person, this, this big, ugly, big dude, and the little boy says to Brad Pitt, he's like, you gotta go fight him. That's what the king wants to happen. And he's like, okay. And he's like, I, I would be so scared to fight this, dude, because he's so big and so scary and so tough. Um, and Brad Pitt says, and that's why no one will remember your name. So for me, I'm going to go fight every day. And the truth is, people remembering your name is, is ego more than anything else, because the truth, and, and it's so crazy to think about, but because I watch the Oscars and all kind of shit every year, like everybody else, I'm aware that when I die, I'm gonna get two seconds. Other people may not. When my sister goes, she's not gonna get that. Her life is just as valid as mine. And, and, and. The, 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 the lovely thing about the Joan Crawford and Betty Davis story, like if people saw that, the Ryan Murphy thing, there's a really eloquent moment when Betty Davis sees Joan Crawford and she goes, that's, a, that's it? That's all it is? That's what we're doing this for? And so I try to remember why I'm doing it. And it's not for that. It's not to be to gather a bunch of awards. Whitney Houston had a lot of awards. And I remember thinking, when she passed, I said, what happens to her awards? Right. For some reason, I asked my mother, I said, what happens to all those awards in that basement? And I was like, who knows? So it's not about that, but it's about leaving behind a feeling, you know, making, like, what do people, remember me by, but I've learned that for me personally, my legacy is my fiance. It's the children we will hopefully have, it's the memories that we'll share. Because my memory will last longer in her spirit than the two seconds on the Oscars thing. So yes, my mission is to 
be one of the best that ever fucking did it, because that's who the fuck I'm trying to be. I don't want to go to the NBA if I'm not going to be Jordan. I don't want to go to the Super Bowl and not walk away with the trophy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if, it's the thing of like, I think for most brown fucking kids, if you drop us in the fucking forest, we're going to come out with a full belly and a fur coat. <laughs> so, the money is nice. I work hard, I earn that. Um, there's a level of freedom that I have because of that. A freedom that I worship and I cherish every day because my ancestors did not have that. So, yeah, I'm gonna get this money. <laughs> I'm gonna live gloriously and think abundantly, but I'm also gonna make sure that money is uh, serving others rather than just my selfish needs per se. But I do want to be the beginning. I know where this starts. I'm, I'm, this is the beginning of wealth for those that will come after me. It started here. Um, and we deserve that. Yeah, so it's like, so that to me is starting something that my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, you know what I'm saying? That that's also a part, it's like through my storytelling, they gonna be good. So it serves two purposes. It's about me getting my shit out um, and using my brokenness as a way to reflect it on you so that way you see that your brokenness is not unique. And that's my job as an artist, is to fucking look in the mirror and, and see the blemishes, the beauty, the ugliness, the pain, the loneliness, the abandonment, and pour it into a character that somebody can look at and then see themselves in it. I just want to be a reflection. And I do it for us. Like, no shade to the lovely Caucasian people and all that, but it's like, <laughs> somebody got to tell our story. So that way, you know, they don't forget who we are and who we were and who we're supposed to be because they've been telling our story for a long time. But when we started telling our own, that's when the culture shifted because they want to hear our version of our stories. Finally. It's, more, it's more potent. It's going to stick to your ribs. There's something about it that you can't shake. You, I, motherfuckers couldn't shake Moonlight. You couldn't shake that shit. Cause you like, yeah, you couldn't shake Get Out. Even though they tried on the Oscar stage. They, try, they tried to shake it. But that's why, and that's why, and I think, look, I saw, I'm that, I saw Moonlight like three times in the movie theater. Cause I was like, eesh, Jesus. But you know, I still can't shake Pariah. Cause I saw that, I was like, and this is my, I watched it myself. Oh my God, like, or a version of it. Um, and I got to become friends with D. And I'm like, D, like, bitch, like this shit is like, this is, this is us, this is, our, this is who we are. And you know, and then, and so I feel honored that people say to me like, bitch, I can't shake the Thanksgiving episode. That is an honor for me because, and I wrote that, I was in London making a Spiel, Steven Spielberg movie. I had three days off. Aziz was like, come on. <laughs> and I wrote it, didn't get a single note. What I wrote, is what you saw. And that also, I think, speaks to the confidence, because it's like, oh, okay, well, shit. And we got some stuff coming, you know? Like, the stuff that I guess, like, people, they think they know what the voice is. They don't know yet. You know, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep using my shit as, you know, the muse, and keep giving it to you, and, and making it, you know, something so relatable that you, you can't, you just can't help but lean in and you want to look away, but you can't do that because it's, it's, I want to show us ourselves. Um, awesome. Yeah. Great answer.